Welcome to episode 5 of Tourum TV. In this episode we get back on the road with Mark Knight for part 2 of the Tourum Knight 6th birthday tour. Visiting Manchester, Belfast, Dublin and a bonus party in Amsterdam. Then we revisit the Ministry of Sound party and talk to Jim and Danielle of Crazy P who played with live elements to their DJ set. Following that we head back to Amsterdam and get the lowdown from two of EDM's young rising stars. Danik, who is part of Hardwell's Revealed Recordings label, and Nicky Romero, who has rocketed up the DJ Mag Top 100 poll recently with his own label, Protocol Recordings. So sit back and relax for Tool Room TV, Episode 5. We kick things off where we left in Episode 4. It's the Tourum Night 6th birthday tour. It's the morning after the Edinburgh gig and Mark makes his way to Manchester for gig number four. But he's having a spot of bother writing up an interview for DJ Mag. And what was the biggest record of the year? Any ideas? So we're uh, two hours in the three and a half hour journey between uh, Edinburgh and Manchester. Mm -hmm. Beautiful countryside, amazing countryside going across the Lake District. <laughs> I'd love to bring my son up here when he's old and go walking, it'd be brilliant. But um, as I say, two hours in and only four questions in this DJ Mag Top 100 questionnaire. Do you know what, I'd love to be a journalist because I think the idea of journalism is you say I've got a two page bed to do, you get an artist to fill it in, give them a deadline and then sit back on your sofa. It's a nightmare. So I'm stuck on um, what's the biggest record of 2012. I don't know, I'm completely stuck going from iTunes. I'm currently thinking I've played the most. I've finished a lot on Eric Bridge Mix and M83. It's an amazing record. Just totally and utterly euphoric. But cool, you know, how he managed to strike that balance of both. A bit of a don. I mean, I hope to be as good as Eric Bridge when I grow up, that's for sure. But um, if you've got any ideas, give us a shout. With his homework to keep him busy on the train journey, Mark eventually arrives in Manchester, ready for the night ahead. And in classic British fashion, the sunshine turns to rain before the gig at Sound Control. Manchester has a special place in UK clubbing history, and the party people won't let a few raindrops keep them down. You can probably tell from the uh, beautiful weather having outside, we're in Manchester for part four of TK6. I love coming to Manchester. I don't think I've ever had a bad gig in Manchester. Yeah, ever since I've been coming back here from way back in the day uh, when I went to the Hacienda, this place is a real special place in my heart, and I think tonight could be a bit special. So we're here, um, and it definitely is a loft space, and it reminds me of a club that I used to play in Maystone called The Warehouse, which then turned into The Loft. Had some legendary nights back in there. Car oh, crikey, way back in the day. And that's where all the original club class parties in Maystone used to That's where Nick Fanciulli had his first residency, and I mean, if it's anything like that place tonight, it should be a blinder. Love Mark Knight. Love Mark, Knight. <laughs> Mark Knight's amazing. Because <laughs> we love Mark Knight. We love raving. <laughs> we love teal room nights. My night is sick. He's so My good. Night is My sick. night's the best. This is like amazing. <laughs> Manchester. A man, Mark Knight is a man. Well, Mark Knight is the one. Crikey, I don't think it's much better than on a Thursday night. It was absolutely grand and going off. Ireland's got a lot to follow. Morning, got the bruising, four down, two to go. It's another day and another airport. Time for a quick snack before the short trip to Belfast. Belfast. 
Uh, well, we're on the fifth one now. Yeah, fifth one. Friday night. Always have great nights here. Should be good. Okay, so uh, we're on our way to Yellow for the fifth instalment of TK6. Uh, we've been doing this tour of nights of residence here for a couple of years now. And it's a brilliant club. If you ever come to Belfast, you need to come check it out. It properly goes on. A bit of Stevie Wonder is always welcome. Thanks, Belfast. Another one down and the sun is shining in Belfast. We've done planes and trains. Now it's automobiles. It's a couple of hours drive to Dublin and en route, Mark ponders the fantastic reaction to his track, All Right, all throughout the tour. Best moment so far, well, what's been the best moment so far? Uh, it's a tough one because every gig's been, been really good. It's not been like one you've got, that was okay. Everything's been fantastic. Um, one thing that's been really apparent and uh, it's really hit me around the back of the head is the record all right, everyone's just loving it, you know, I suppose when you're very close to a record you don't actually see the enormity of it and going to all these different areas within the UK has really hit home, you know, how big that record has resonated throughout the summer and uh, definitely chart plans are foot for that now, I think. We're bubbling in Dublin. Mark arrives in Dublin on a beautiful day with some spare time to check out the shops. Ireland has a rich musical heritage and it's apparent in the streets everywhere you go. The Irish definitely know how to party. Tonight should be off the hook. Mark does an interview with a local music magazine and the tour room and Mark Knight faithful are hyped outside as they wait patiently to get in the club. Welcome to Dublin, Mark Knight, you legend. Welcome to Dublin, Mark Knight. Welcome to Dublin, Mark. Love you. Love you the best. It's my third time seeing it this year. Can't wait, mate. Happy birthday, children. Morning, it's uh, quarter past nine. The last TK6 show is done. Um, sometimes there's a lot of hype online pre gig, and this whole week leading up to Dublin has just been mad. The amount of people saying it's coming, it's just been crazy. And uh, wow, it certainly lived up to every expectation. Thank you so much, Dublin. Possibly the best show of the whole tour. Uh, just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who comes down to all the gigs, making it just a, a brilliant UK tour. Um, a lot of people are doing tours in the States at the moment, but I think people have forgotten how great it is to come and tour in this uh, country of ours. Phenomenal. Um, on the way home now, uh, maybe we should just do one more show. I don't think TK6, the door should be shut yet. Maybe we'll see in Amsterdam. That's the UK and Ireland tour done and dusted. What an amazing tour. Every venue absolutely rocked it. Now for one final TK6 party in Amsterdam's Panama Club. Ah, well we couldn't leave it there. 
TK6 continues the very, very last show in Amsterdam and Panama for ADE. amazing tour. Now we head back to London and revisit the TK6 party where we caught up with electronic music act Crazy P. So we are here at Ministry of Sound, it's the Tour of Night's sixth birthday. I'm here with Crazy P, how are you doing guys? Very well thank you, yes. Feeling good. Thanks for joining us. Okay. You guys are going to play tonight, are you looking forward to it? Not really, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not really into music. To be You've been honest. forced to come. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm not into the whole. No, no, we are looking. We've played here a few times at Ministry. Yeah, and, you it's, know, a good it's always. Room yeah, it's a great, great sounding room, so we're looking forward to oh, it. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, when was the last time you came? Down? It was um, after the, the Love Box Festival, we did the after the party. So was that back in June? Not, not long ago. Yeah. Oh, good. So we you're like the regulars. Yeah, I like that little room. That, well, the little room is a bigger room, that 103. It's good. Yeah, yeah. so we're yeah. looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, we're really pleased to have you down. With us, really nice ones. So playing live must really inspire you guys when you come to writing new music. How does uh, when you do the sound system? How, how does that influence that process? Well, it's, it's sort of starting to influence it more and more, actually, isn't it? In terms of like future material. Yeah, because you realise what works well live, yeah. what makes the crowd sort of buzz. For want of a better word, but you know, if the crowd reacts to something that you're doing. And obviously that makes you energ energised. No, yeah, good. Yeah, completely no, get it. But yeah. the band is like a, it's a live performance. Yeah. It? When we do that, it's very much a band thing. So when, you, when we do the sound system, it's more aimed towards the dance floor. And yeah. that gets us thinking in those terms. Yeah. It, you know, we've been doing more and more of it. So it's it, it's going to creep into the new material, you know, a bit more yeah. on the dancing yeah. edge, I think. So definitely. you get influenced by, by, by what we're playing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what we're making as well, you know, yeah. at the same time. Excellent. So Crazy P, you've been moving dance floors for over 15 years. What's the journey been like and how has it evolved over that time? Well, a lot of late nights. Yeah, <laughs> as you can tell. Yeah. yeah. But hey, look, you're alright. You look, you're fully tanned up. What are you on about? Urban. Urban. <laughs> She's been on holiday for a week, you know what I mean? I mean that's hard work. Um, no, it's, it's evolved. I don't know, how has it evolved? We started, I mean, we started off, I think we've all grown together because we didn't, we weren't sort of pro musicians or we, we were getting into it, we were finding our way, you know, in yeah. the early days and we spent a lot of years growing together. We have the same team all the way through, we've never changed any personnel and uh -huh. we've always like, we, we, the journey, we've had it together. Yeah. So it, like we've gained strength from that and like, you know, it's uh, we've got a good team. So it's uh, it, it's been a, it's been a fun time, isn't it? Yeah. And we're it's gone really quickly. It's gone very quickly and we're all really good friends so we're sort of like, family as well as, uh, which is sort of why we've been together for so many years, yeah. we, we actually get on. Well, we have moments where you just, we're all just like, what the hell is going on here, you know, yeah. like gigs that we've done, you know, like in, like big gigs we've done, we're all just like, what, how did we get here, you know, yeah. so it's really an odd thing, but it's, I think we've, we've all, we're all at the same level, you know, nobody's sort of, there's no big egos or no big, massive personalities or That's characters, cool. so, we just like we all hold each other's hands and just like go for it basically. Do you ever fall out? If you've been together me, that long, me, me and Dan do. Me and Dan yeah, do, yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah. We're, we're like we're definitely the arguers out of the band, definitely. Me and Dan, yeah. but it's more like a brother sister thing. I'm oh, like, that's yeah. cool. So you do make up <laughs> very quickly, generally. It stronger. Yeah, it does. It yeah. does. So there's obviously a strong sense of soul in Crazy P Sound. If there was any other type of music that you guys could work on completely outside of what you do, what do you think it could be? And do you think as a band you could agree on something completely different? Well you should hear some of the outtakes from <laughs> what we do. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. we do we do tend to cover all bases when we're just in there, you yeah. know, and we don't you know, we'll, we'll we'll just follow what we're doing and then the day after maybe go, well that's not very crazy P but I mean we've done lots of all sorts of stuff, haven't we, over yeah. the years, like rocky stuff and wow. heavy techno-y stuff. So and it could be a crazy piece of rock album somewhere in the vault. Well, we've the got way. a few that never made it, you know. Yeah, definitely, which were 
a bit off the wall and a bit. Cool. And I think we, uh, as we've got older, your musical tastes change and you get into different sounds. And I think we've we've always done that in the studio, yeah. but it's never quite made it out if it wasn't, yeah. you know, Crazy P. Or yeah. it, it was too far away from what Crazy P is, but. Musically, we're into all sorts of stuff, so... It could that, come out under a pseudonym. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, side projects. Could I like that, it could. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> it if, could. If you've got yeah. a good side project name, let's get out on that, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, yeah. cool, yeah. cool. So your last album, When We On, landed on 2020 Vision last year. Yeah. Can you tell us about what's, what's forthcoming? Have you got any other albums, exciting projects that you're working on? Yeah, well, we're just actually about to start writing the next record next week. We've taken, cool. like, a month off of gigs. So we're just going to get in the studio and um, and see what happens, basically. Yeah. So it's quite exciting. So that starts next week, so we're all quite buzzed up about that. Yeah. Um, it's been such a busy summer, and I think it's really difficult to say no to things. Yeah. But you have to, because, you know, you're sort of playing music over and over again, and, and, and we want to sort of, you know... Yeah, you want to yeah. change it around. Yeah. And before you know it, you've been touring... Well, we've been touring that album for... It feels like a long time. Yeah. And, so yeah, like Dan says, you have to have a stop and go right. Completely, let's just yeah. let's get in there and write some new stuff, you know. Yeah. So the, yeah, that's happening next week for a month. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. And you sound really keen and eager as well, which is good because you've got to, you've got to keep that hunger up, which is must be difficult. But it's always you know, we always have great fun in the studio. It's, it's never not fun, is it? Yeah, it's, always, it's, it's always good. And I think with DJing as well and doing the sound system, you know, you sort of. You, you want to evolve the set, so yeah. I think we're all thinking about how we can change it a little bit yeah. and make it a, make it a bit different. Make yeah. it, you know, keep the, the essence of it, but yeah. like make it a bit more exciting. And make, you know, yeah. that, so that's a good thing. You know, like you said earlier with the DJ, absolutely stuff, right. Really influences yeah. you and gives you different ideas. It gets you thinking about you know yeah. a, you know a world of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. you've kind of got the best of both worlds there. with that, haven't you? You have. DJ and and also, and like, like the past few months, I've been collating stuff and getting little bits ready to go for. This next month, which yeah. I'm, you know, we can get out and have yeah, a go yeah. at. So yeah, yeah, we can forward to it. I like it. Well, we look forward to hearing it. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you send us a copy yeah, well, yeah. first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now we jump back to Amsterdam and talk with two of EDM's fast rising DJ producers, Danik and Nikki Romero. First up, it's Danik who's putting out some great music through Hardwell's Revealed Recordings label. So we're here at the Amsterdam Dance Event 2012. Joining me is Danik. How are you doing, man? Nice to meet you, man. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. So, firstly, you're part of this young elite force that's coming from Holland. What is it about the Dutch scene that's so unstoppable at the moment? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I saw a movie yesterday about the Dutch influence on the dance scene. Um, I think because of we have yeah because of the many festivals, clubs, and bars in, in the Netherlands. Um, there are so many DJs because of that. And the DJs in Holland can do a lot of bookings in one day because we have a small country. So you can do three, maybe some four or five bookings a day. Wow. Which uh, gives, this, gives the DJ a really experienced level. You know, he's, you know how to play for different crowds. Yeah. I think that's a big advantage for the, for the Dutch. DJs. Because in, in the summer you guys have literally hundreds of festivals. Yeah, it's crazy. So if you're playing four or five in one day, yeah. I guess you get to, to travel and experience quite a lot yeah, of different you, styles yeah. and sets. Yeah, definitely. I think that's that's one of the that's one of the most important things why I think the Dutch are so big. Cool, cool. So fast forward to now and you're playing the sold out hardware event at yeah. the Escape. How do you prepare for, for a gig like this? Um, actually, I'm I'm working on music every day, so it's not like I prepare a whole set. It's like I, what the crowd wants on that particular time, I play, yeah. and I always prepare a special edits so that I know I have some, yeah, some some, some ammo to to fire, you know. Yeah. Cool. Because every, nowadays, you know, everybody plays kind of the same, so you have to you have to step up your game and, and put your come own with, standpoint. Put your yeah. own music on, and it's, you know, it's not only own tracks, but especially mashups and bootlegs, I do that a lot because it works so well. People want to hear something that they that they know, you know? Yeah. And if you if you put that on a underground club track with a well-known vocal, it usually works very very good. So it's going to be an exclusive set tonight. Some yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got a lot of new tracks, new own tracks, uh, which I'm going to play for the first time, actually. You heard it here first? Yeah, that's exclusive. Danik exclusive, Escape Club <laughs> tonight. If you're not yeah. here, you should be here. Exclusive. <laughs> so one of your big tracks, Tombo, 
Um, it's very big for Mark Knight, um, most of us at Sorum, you know, big fans of that record. We're here, you're working on something for us at the label, very excited about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it, about the style, the sound? And, and um, well, I, I was a bit surprised about the reactions on Tombo, because for me it was a kind of a track in between, because I, I usually make some progressive with, with the groove, you know, it has to be a little bit techy. And, but I, I needed a song in my own sets to play, where, uh, especially for the ladies, you know, where, where they can move and dance to. And Tombo is a track like that. You, yeah. you can play it like at the beginning of a set, in the middle, and may, sometimes in the end, it depends. And yeah, of course, I need to come up with a follow up for Tombo, and that is a new track called Clobber. And I hope to see that one on Tool Room, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's big, it's very, very big. So here we're at the Amsterdam dance event. Yep. Have you been coming before? Is this your first time um, for the conference? That's my second time. Uh, last year I played at uh, the reveal party at Club Home of uh, Hardwell, of course. But uh, then I played at my old, old alias, which is uh, Funkadelic, at the time. But uh, due to uh, some, uh, how you say that, uh, legal uh, stuff, yeah, I couldn't, I, I couldn't uh, hold that name any longer. So I had to change it to Danik. But I'm very glad I did that because it's more, it's more me because my real name is, is Dan, Dan. So Danik, yeah, was a bit of inside news. For yeah, the it was there. a logic. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> so, and so what would you do to unwind after like a two or three days at the Amsterdam dance event? It's pretty hectic. It's quite yeah. full on. A lot of parties, meetings. What would you do afterwards? Would you go back and chill out, or is it straight to touring? Um, yeah, most of the time, like these kind of days, I get really a lot of inspiration. So, I yeah, I tend to go to the studio directly yeah, you know, back because to the studio. back to the studio and I work hard because I think that's the only thing that is gonna keep the the, the flow going. Yeah. Um, but then again, you need to chill out, and of course, my, yeah, I love to be with my family and my girlfriend and just uh, chill in the couch with a good movie. Yeah, sounds some popcorn. Good, right? Sounds good. Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you very much and for having me. have a really good time at Escape thanks. tonight. We'll be there. Yeah, you I hope should so. be there. Yeah, definitely. Danik is definitely one to watch and sure to keep doing big things in electronic music. Look out for his forthcoming bomb on Tour and Records, Clobber. Now we catch up with Nicky Romero, who already has his own label protocol recordings and is working with the likes of David Guetta, Calvin Harris, and Afrojack big players in the world of pop and EDM. My name is Nicky Romero and we are here in Amsterdam, Amsterdam Dance Event 2012. Uh, we're just across the light supply and um, I went to the Dutch movie uh, Dutch Influence yesterday, um, was the movie premiere about the Dutch influence and the export product, the Dutch DJs, international scene. And it was quite interesting to see how many Dutch DJs we have in different categories doing their thing outside Holland. Um, like Don Diablo, Headhunters, um, me, Armin, Tiesto, everyone in their own category and at the same time, you know, we're just united and, and all one package from Holland and that's super interesting to see. And for me it was cool to see because my dad had a quote in the, in the movie, so I was super proud that he was there with my mom as the only guy as a not producer, not DJ, not like connected to the dance world, giving his opinion, so that was cool. Um, the philosophy of the label Protocol Recordings is um, I wanted to create a platform for new artists and also for myself. Uh, you know, I just wanted to have my own record label so I can decide everything myself. And now we have a team working on it. And I can, now it's pretty cool so I can uh, not only have a record label but also events next to it, you know, and just create a next level platform. I mean the music is one, DJing is two, but to an extent it's also important to have more than that. Yeah, we're building a brand and, and it's also cool to have all artists on my own label. So I have collaborations with Nervo, with Geta, uh, with Fetty coming up, um, even one with Afrojack and uh, many of them are going to be on my own label protocol recordings. So I'm super proud to have all these people uh, on my label in the, in the future. So yeah, that's that's 
And also Calvin Harris, of course. That was that was one of the biggest things for me because he's such a good songwriter and producer. Of course, the job we do is super special, and there are not many people who can do what we do. So we should be very, very honored that you know that we can travel the world and play the clubs and you know be with party people who like your music most of the time. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a blessing. But if I have mentioned one thing that bothered me sometimes is that I just yeah like like many people would say you don't see your family that much you don't see your friends that much um, and at the same time it's also hard to keep on top of the game because there's so many talented guys now because everybody can afford a laptop in Holland at least in Holland and I think in most parts of Europe everybody can afford a laptop so um, you know creating music is getting more easy and more accessible so there are so many talents that you have to keep on top of your game and keep producing, come with new ideas because there's so many people out there. I think the most important thing uh, for the young producers is that keep in mind everything you want to reach is possible. Everything. I mean, many people hold me back like, hey, you probably won't you know, be the one who's going to be on the stage because there's so many guys out there. Why would you be one of that thousand people? So don't let anyone say that to you because if you want to reach something, you can reach it if you just have the focus and if you just if you just you know you're gonna be talented a little bit but if you practice with music it could be guitar lessons piano lessons any musical influence based would be would be great and take your time to produce and to discover how everything works within you know the producing world get to know logic get to know fruit loops and find something you feel comfortable with to work with and there's a way to go. I mean, just, just go do it and practice. And that's the only way. I mean, I locked myself up for hours, days, weeks, you know, to get to, to the point and to the sound where I am now. And it's really important to do something else than the people who are already producing. Because otherwise, you will never create your own brand. So if you do something new, there's you're gonna be the new Skrillex, Afrojack, maybe me, it, you know, way to go. <laughs> So that's it for episode 5 of Tool Room TV. Make sure you tune in for episode 6 where we have a mammoth show for you. We'll be at the BPM Festival in Mexico and also in Berlin to check out the scene there with Anja Schneider's Mobley Records. You don't want to miss it. See you next time. Yeah.